so the next topic in module 3 is qpsk okay qpsk is called as quadrature phase shift keying or it is sometimes called as quadri phase shift keying so in this video we will see the space uh, signal space representation of qpsk and the transmitter and the receiver side so you know that the what is the aim of your digital communication system to to give reliable performance uh, low it should have low probability of error and the efficient utilization of the channel bandwidth so this uh, method quadri uh, uh, or quadrature phase shift keying is used uh, to give the efficient utilization of channel bandwidth okay so it is also known as bandwidth conserving conserving modulation scheme so what is the difference between your uh, it is also a phase shift keying what is quadrature four right so yeah, what it does is the QPSK transmits two bits per symbol. So in the case of BPSK, we have seen a single bit, right? So in this case, it transmits two bits per symbol, which helps in conserving the bandwidth. So if you are transmitting two bits per symbol, what are the different combinations you will be having? Four combinations, right? So these bits can have four combinations, either 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 or 1, 1. Therefore, to transmit two bits per symbol we need how many faces four faces right one two three four faces that's why it is called as quadrature phase shift keying or quadri phase shift keying so this four faces let us divide the uh, complete 360 degree uh, by four so you have a separation of 90 degree right so we have a separation of phase angle by 90 degree in four faces so in qpsk the phase of the carrier takes one of the four equally spaced values such that it is having a space of 90 degree okay so the first angle is going to be 45 degree what will be the second angle 45 degree plus 90 degree which will give 135 degree or 3 pi by 4 so these are the four different angles 45 degree 135 degree then the spacing is again 90 degree so 135 plus 90 will get 225 and 225 degree plus 90 will get 350 so 45 degree 135 degree 225 degree and 315 are the different phases which we are taking so if we represent in a sinusoidal so this is going to be your 45 degree right 45 degrees so this is 90 45 plus 90 here you will be having 135 degree and this is going to be your 225 degree and this is going to be your 315 degree so these are the four different space uh, what phases which you have in your quadrature phase shift keying okay and uh, in general the transmitted qpsk signal can be represented in time domain as s i of t is equal to root of 2 e divided by t into cos 2 pi f c t plus theta so theta i can be written as 2 i minus 1 into pi by 4 so for your time duration 0 to capital t 0 elsewhere so what is your e e is your transmitted signal energy per bit and t is your simple duration what will be your value for i in this case i will be equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 okay so first let us go on to your signal space diagram of your qpsk so you are getting four uh, uh, different uh, points right so when you take uh, your orthonormal basis function you will be having two orthonormal basis function which we will be seeing shortly okay so these are going to be the four points okay so what is this quadrant it will be equal to 1 1 here it will be 0 1 right 0 1 here it will be both will be negative 0 0 and this is going to be 1 0 so these are your four uh, this is your signal space uh, diagram of your QPSK in short now you are going to find out how you have got the signal space diagram there are four message points and the associated signal vector are defined by what will be your uh, signal uh, si of t is equal to root 2e by t into cos 2 pi f c t plus theta i theta i is nothing but 2i minus 1 into pi by 4 and theta i is equal to 2i minus 1 that is what written here let me take this as equation 2 now this equation 2 can be written as what are the four uh, signals you are getting s1 of t, s2 of t, s3 of t and s4 of t. So s1 of t will be pi by 4, here 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4. So this is representing the die bit 1 1. So this is you can take it in this way 1 1 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0. That is how it is written 1 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 i is equal to 1 2 3 4 so what are the uh, angle uh, pi by 4 3 pi by 4 5 pi by 4 7 pi by 4 so these are 
the four different signals. S i of t is written as uh, when i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, s1 of 2, s2 of 2, uh, sorry, s2 of t, s3 of t and s4 of t. Now, if you use the equation here, it is in the form of s i of t is in the form of cos a plus b, right? So, what will be your uh, cos a plus b formula? Cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So, in, the, in this case, what is your a cos a is equal to 2 pi f c t plus b is equal to 2 i minus 1 into pi by 4. You can split it and write it. So, equation 1 can be rewritten as s i of t is equal to root 2 e by t into cos a cos b. That is cos 2 pi f c t into cos 2 i minus 1 pi by 4 minus sin a sin b. Sin so, root 2e by t into sin 2 pi f c t into sin 2i minus 1 into pi by 4, 0 otherwise, okay. So, this is just you have uh, rewritten it. Why you have rewritten it? By this you are going to uh, get to observation. By means of Gram-Schmidt's uh, orthogonalization procedure, you can find out the number of orthonormal basis function, right. So, here it is cos and here it is sin. So, you will be having two a different signal so you will be having two different orthonormal basis function so you can detect that one of the observation is that there are two orthonormal basis function defined by a pair of quadrature carrier phi 1 of t and phi 2 of t what will be your phi 1 of t will be equal to root 2 by t into cos 2 pi f c t as we have seen in the previous video so you know that s 1 of t is equal to s i of t is equal to sorry s 1 of t is equal to phi 1 of t divided by root e so you will be getting phi 1 of t is equal to root 2 by t into cos 2 pi f c t and phi 2 of t is equal to root 2 by t into sin 2 pi f c t two orthonormal basis function this is first observation now what is your second uh, observation there are four message points defined by the 2d signal vector right there are so what you can uh, uh, short in short you can write si is equal to root e into cos 2 pi uh, sorry root e into cos 2 i minus 1 pi by 4 and minus root e into, uh, into sin 2 i minus 1 into pi by 4 where i is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4. So you can write in short the elements of the signal vectors s i1 and s2 uh, s i2 are given by if i is equal to 1 2 3 4 you can just write it uh, accordingly right the four different what are the phases you have pi by 4 3 pi by 4 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4 45 degree 135 degree 225 degree and 315 degree what are the uh, uh, values uh, that is uh, input die bit you have 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 if you are having any confusion just put the four quadrant and uh, write positive positive right here it is negative positive here it is negative negative here it is positive negative so 1 1 anti-clockwise if you go 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 that is how you can write this okay s1 s2 s3 and s4 of t now what will be your coordinates coordinate s i1 and s i2 will be equal to here it is plus plus right so positive 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 root e by 2 and positive root e by 2 here it is minus plus that is what given minus plus here it is minus minus and 0 0 right minus minus and it is 1 0 so it is plus minus okay so these are your coordinates of your message point so now we are going for your signal space characterization uh, this is your signal space you can draw it diagrammatically therefore the QPSK signal has a two dimensional signal constellation so what are the values you have n will be equal to 2 and m will be equal to 4 okay now so this is uh, the given uh, signal space representation right as I have drawn before you have two orthonormal basis function phi 1 phi 2 and this is your decision boundary and the, what are the four message points you have so the message point is taken uh, message point 1 uh, 1 0 0 0 0 1 or 1 1 or you can write it in either way 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 okay so you can write it in this so which are the four message points you have m1 here it is taken here as m1 m2 m3 m4 okay m3 m4 so accordingly you can write the region also region z1 z2 z3 z4 okay so this is how you will draw your you can draw your signal space representation waveforms we will see separately in a different uh, video now you are going for your generation of your generation and your um, receiver uh, generation and coherent detection of your qpsk signal that is qpsk transmitter 
so this is your diagram block diagram of your qpsk transmitter which will have uh, your input is going to be your binary data sequence for example 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 okay and it will be given to your polar non return to zero level encoder output of your plus a minus a right plus uh, root e by 2 minus root e by 2 and here you will be giving it to your uh, demultiplexer so what what is the use of this demultiplexer it will split it into odd and even terms okay so the odd term will go is taken as a1 of t and the even term is taken as a2 of t the odd term will be multiplied by your orthonormal basis function phi 1 of t and your even will be multiplied by your orthonormal basis function phi 2 of t. So cos 2 pi fct here phi 2 of t is equal to sin 2 pi fct 90 degree phase shift right and uh, both sum of the both the signal will be given to your QPS uh, output uh, you will be getting it as QPSK signal or your modulated signal s of t okay so here uh, the same explanation is given here so here i can write that two individual bpsk signal right it can be viewed as two bpsk generators that work in parallel each at a bit rate equal to one half of the bit rate of the original binary sequence at the qpsk transmitter input then it consists of a demultiplexer which divides the binary wave into two separate waves that is your odd number die bits and even number die bits so this odd number 0 0 1 0 will be separated will be going on to the odd and the even 1 1 0 will be going on to the even uh, channel okay so this is your uh, qpsk transmitter what will happen to your qpsk receiver this is your receiver so in the case of receiver what will be your input signal the received signal right so this s of t so why is this x of t what will be your x of t s of t plus once it passes through the channel you will be having your noise that is taken as x of t x of t which it is also a coherent detection because your rate is synchronized with the transmitter right so it is this will be your correlator which consists of your multiplier and an integrator right output of the correlator here it is x1 x2 will be given to your zero decision device that is with a threshold zero so this is your in phase channel and this is your quadrature channel so what will happen here if uh, uh, your decision device if x1 is greater than 0 it will be in favor of symbol 1 uh, if it is uh, less than 0 it will be in favor of symbol 0 and both the outputs of your decision device 1 and division uh, decision device 2 will be co combined together to the multiplexer and finally you will be going you will be getting your original estimate 0 1 1 0 0 okay original estimate of the transmitted binary sequence so this is your transmitter and the receiver so what is written in your receiver it can it consists of a pair of correlators uh, it has a common input the correlator has the common input x of t x of t will be equal to s of t plus noise right uh, it consists of locally generated phi 1 of t phi 2 of t receiver is synchronized with the transmitter the output is x1 of t and x2 right x1 and x2 observation now pair of decision device if x1 is greater than 0 the favor of symbol 1 if x1 is less than 0 it is in favor of symbol 0 the multiplexer combines the two binary sequences so this is your first video which consists of your qpsk signal space representation transmitter and the receiver in next video we will see your probability of the error